Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 Legendary Iron Man Exquisite Timing, the second attempt. My name is Saiken. I'm trying to do the world first uh, run on Legendary Difficulty Iron Man with permanent dark events and get the Exquisite Timing um, uh, achievement, which is finishing the game in four and a half months or less. Today we're going to look into the Advent Black Side, which is a must win mission for us. Um, we got 16 enemies, enemy unknown, um, and advent mech here means um, there is actually only the chosen left. So we're going to be up against the chosen assassin and a couple of really nasty uh, uh, creatures. Our team will be Bones, who's leading the charge, Hogbite, Renvin, and Dark Tower Naxus. I think overall a uh, pretty well versed team, but at the same time, the Assassin is a great cause of concern. Uh, mainly because uh, her unavoidable damage if we are not finding her fast enough. So killing 16 enemies plus reinforcements might be a bit um, difficult. We're going to see if I can pull it off. Alrighty, and we have just landed. So let's see what Central has to tell us. Surprisingly enough, we need to invade uh, the uh, Black Side facility. So there are a couple of uh, things that are always the same. Uh, number one, uh, the Black Side facility usually consists out of three to four patrols. Our idea is to uh, eliminate those, of course. Number two. Stay clear of those turrets. We're still not entirely sure if they're fully automated. Number two is you usually have two turrets uh, throughout the mission, uh, which of course for us is going to um, be a reason to eliminate both of them. And number three, there are a lot of explodable items, i.e. a lot of remote startable objects, which work in our favor. Which is why the um, Reaper is such a very strong character class on this particular mission. You always have a target-rich environment for remote start. I'm going to play the save. So this here is probably not going to be the most aggressive gameplay at the beginning. Since I almost certainly know that the Assassin is going to wait for us to jump on us as soon as we're done with... Uh, um, with breaking concealment, I want to make sure that we keep our concealment as long as possible. And as part of that process, how would this here actually work? Kill the tower, but wouldn't kill the two enemies. I think we're somewhat safe here. If they just keep in the proximity of the car, we can get both of them. We can get the tower anytime that we want. As you direct. And for our remaining SWAT, let's really just move up here. Will do. I'll keep them out of harm's way for now. In the accessible public um, high ground space so that I can theoretically move them to a nice open position if their ne help is needed. But for now we should be fine. Normally there is a car here, which unfortunately is not the case this time. Would have given us more options to just explode the enemies. Uh, this here isn't too bad, but I think we'll, we'll be out of luck unfortunately. They are barely out of range. I am so this here should not trigger anyone. And we're blocking the staircase so they can't come up. Eyes on the prize. Eyes on the prize. I maintain my watch. Yes, yes, get closer to the car. No, we're again moving away from the car. That's unfortunate. 
Yeah, that would only kill one. Unfortunately, the second is a little bit out of range. Do we want to get to here because we know... Well, the tower was here on the corner, so this position here actually should be fine. Yeah, it is. Okay, perfect. Good. We're just going to overwatch. Both of the patrols are close to remote startable objects, but not just quite there yet. Third door, probably an opening of another patrol. So we're continuing our um, position. We just need to wait until the patrol actually ends in a somewhat yeah, negative or um, exposed position for them. Those two are not close enough to the explosion here. So I can't reach them yet, but we'll eventually get them. It's, it's a matter of being patient. I do understand that that's not the most, uh, yeah, just aggressive gameplay. But what you got to understand uh, when you're playing such high stakes um, missions is I much rather want to control the pace and on a no um, timer mission, it's more important to assure that you are not taking any damage than to like pull off this flashy play. Because at any point, the Chosen can just decide to show up uh, once the concealment is broken. Then we might take some damage and we will be forced to blow a lot of cooldowns. So I want to use the remote start capability to the maximum of its, um, of its capabilities. No, it's, uh, the game is making it more difficult for me than it should be. That was a juicy, juicy target. Those guys are moving a bit closer. Good. They are moving away. I probably should follow up and see if I can remote start any of them. Uh, the other targets, uh, any of the other targets further in, but this here looks like a really, really sweet ass target. Okay, perfect. That is great. More Overwatch here. That is going to be a two for one. Always observe your surroundings. And the game even told, uh, tells you always. Observe your surroundings. Very well articulated. You should definitely do that. As a player in particular. Good. 2 out of 16 done. And we are starting to move in further. It's going to become spicy, guys. An alien scouting party. There we go, there's a further scouting party. Let's just take the high ground here for now. Seeing yet another scouting party. So that's probably the better position. They don't know that I'm there. There might be another car here. Could be a great remote start. Those two downstairs. I will go. Those two downstairs are trying to catch me um, up here. They're trying to catch me riding dirty, but that ain't going to happen. We're just blocking the stairs.
Very nice. That's come on, stop there. Hold on. Oh, that's still two of them in a single blow. I think we could deal with that. How about we're positioning ourselves here? I will reposition. That should be very difficult to spot out. Bit of an interlude. There we go, that should be two kills. Our world is dangerous. Not the two I was hoping to get, because it's of course better to get the Sundancer and the Captain. But getting the Captain, uh, getting the Sundancer and the Trooper for free is uh, something that is good enough, I suppose. All right, let's move on. Moving all the way up to here. They are nearly at an explosive, uh, explodable object. For a pack of two, I would actually like to get both of them. So when they are down to one uh, alien, they're often trying to find other packs just so that they can kind of group up. So far so good, we have a pretty decent control with our position here. And he's getting close, but he's kind of avoiding Moving as ordered. to stand right next to an explodable object. Second tower is uh, up here, by the way. And those guys might or might not move in there. I'll just move a little bit further back. I don't want to be caught by either of them by surprise. Well, look at that. The enemy just cheated its way uh, to find us. How is that even possible, huh? We're on the rooftop minding our own business and of course the enemy just walks in casually that's not even a route they're normally taking not at all and look at that the reinforcements are already coming in this is absolutely hilarious and i'm i, I don't try uh, i'm not trying to bad mouth uh, the the AI here I'm just giving you the facts that this had been a very artificial engagement they were absolutely aware that we are here it took too long to engage us So as a result of it, they were here. just moving in. And that's usually what happens. And I get it. Uh, the game originally was... Um, the concept of the game originally was to create kind of some high um, action uh, sort of tension. 
where the idea was really that you're engaging in one pick after another after another. So <clears throat> what the AI does is uh, when you're just not engaging is it will find you and will simply make you engage. And the whole concept about about uh, creating uh, timers was to yeah create a more aggressive play style. Now what they did in the same uh, vein, and I think that was the biggest mistake that they probably could have done is they created the Reaper with all of the logic behind the Reaper in uh, being a supreme scout, not only invalidating um, the Ranger scout, but also suggesting to players uh, that there would be um, such a thing as a stealth or a roguelike gameplay, and there really isn't. Um, so for me, that design was inconsequent. Although I absolutely love the Reaper just because it's an overpowered and incredibly strong class. Uh, what's not to love about the Reaper, right? Um, so by that by that very standard, the Reaper is fantastic. It's just gorgeous. But you simply have to admit uh, that it does not fit the normal idea of how XCOM originally, with its very core design, was supposed to be played. And the answer to that is, it was originally uh, supposed to be played as a small tactical game where you are engaging uh, the enemies and everything that sort of deviates from uh, that plan per se uh, will, yeah, will clash with the core hard-coded concept. Um, I'm just cleaning up uh, the uh, enemies at the same time. You probably hear that I'm not not at all surprised about uh, the enemies finding us or uh, or even having a chance to run into our direction. I mean, it's just if uh, once you play the game for long enough, you absolutely are familiar with that sort of I'm not saying BS, but that sort of game design decision. Which is a logical consequence. Just barely out of range. I don't want to start uh, burning. So what we're going to do is we're just going to move up and hope that that 60% shot is going to hit. Which, lo and behold, of course it does not. Fairly too close. Well, it's not perfect, and it's definitely not an optimal move, but I still am going to take a shot here because he's going to either mind spin or more likely going to re uh, try to reanimate. And there is no uh, there is no negative impact for us if he reanimates. Matter of fact, maybe that even helps us with the Chosen, because the Chosen has started uh, behind uh, the building and it's now pretty much on top of the building, I would uh, say. So it's not unlikely that very much in the next round the Chosen is uh, going to approach us. So the Templar is going to move down, gets a kill, fills up his focus. And as part of all of that, we can also go into parry, which might be a great idea. Just to get rid of the Chosen. No, the Chosen isn't that far, um, that far ahead. We'll take a high ground position regardless. Good to go. 
reloading. Overwatch is a bit pointless against the Josen because she's immune to Overwatch. But Hogbite should be the closest target. Yep, Chosen just moved along here. We definitely know she's here. The question is if she just moved around, where, what, what's a good place to spot her out? Go up the way, all the way up to here. It's an option. We go to here, which is probably a better option because I could find everyone behind. She could still hide here. I would see all of this. I would see her hiding here. So let's try this. I think that's the best spot to uh, to just spot her out. There we go. Just revealed her little uh, her little ass here. Well, of course she retaliates. Um, with mockery, which is her usual way of saying, ha, shit, I've been caught out. Yep, indeed you have. You've been caught with your hands in the cookie jar. The trap is set. And that should shred her plus deal a pretty decent amount of damage. I'll keep the Mimic Beacon in mind. In terms of just dealing with her, Renman might need the A protocol to hit her. Oh shit, I cannot reach. Mm, okay, so that was the target indicator. My bad. Well, it's still okay. start blasting her that's a uh, 12 points of damage probably won't be able to just kill her completely pretty unfortunate yeah still wouldn't have been enough we're just not uh, we're just shy of a bit of damage she's immune to flashbangs she's not responding well to uh, to mimic beacons this here will simply trigger uh, the tower and uh, the advent uh, officer, but I don't, I don't mind at that point. Advent officer doesn't have anything on us. We're moving back. If she wants to reach us, she's anyways going to do that, and we'll just Overwatch. Uh, not to hit her, but maybe something else comes Onward. into uh, range. No human standing. Double movement. Didn't spot us out, which is great. It's now vanishing winds, which I might as well reveal her yet again. Facing a true master. There is no shame in despair. Let's see if we can spot her out. Moving to here. Haven't spotted her out. She might be just around the corner. Moving up. I want to get to the Advent Officer. The gift of psionic power will do nothing to slow your demise, Templar. Could 
no momentum, I could also instead just kill this guy. to reveal our position with the frag grenade even if it kills this guy I guess that'll be okay unfortunately we weren't able to spot her out I think we can just parry um, because we are not. Well, we are in the range of the tower, aren't we? Yeah, we are in the range of the tower. That's unfortunate. that the um, Mimic Beacon tends to sometimes work and sometimes not work on the Chosen, which is a bit of a shame. Do I want to already draw the Mimic Beacon? Overwatching, he's probably going to go to here, take a shot into half cover, so that would not be very good. Can't really kill him unless we're sacrificing our cover, uh, our concealment. Don't necessarily want to do that. Problem with a grenade is it will reveal us. Don't have the means to remote start. I could theoretically throw the grenade, then hope to not be discovered, but that's only a 20, 10 or 20% chance to not be discovered. And as a backup plan, throw the Mimic Beacon. I feel uh, it's probably too risky, so we're going for the Mimic Beacon. I really don't like that idea a lot. But it forces him to come in. We'll get the overwatch shot, kill him. There's a small percent chance uh, that the Chosen will actually choose the Mimic Beacon. Wow, the tower is relentless. Well, and now it's a question of whether or not we can find the Chosen. Okay. Question is, where could she be? I mean, she could have teleported in either direction, right? Okay, I'll go. Roger that. So this is as far as we can move without really triggering much. We know she's not here. She's most likely not here. Is she here? Probably not. A lot of uh, the positions can be seen, so she could be behind here, behind here, maybe somewhat behind here. Moving to here isn't so far risky as it blocks a lot of line of sight. 
but it is also helping us to spot out all of these fields and that which could be here which i could find out by moving here could move to here which is not a bad position if you think about it let's take that it has a lot of angles covered all of this just this field here is not covered all of this all of this entirety here Parrying. Reloading. Reloading and reloading. Mainly because Overwatch will not work on her. It is just a sad encounter. If you are not spotting her out, you're just going to eat dirt. Surprise, surprise, right? No, it's actually not a surprise. <sighs> not even hunkering down really changes um, a lot with that encounter. If you're hunkering down, you're still taking a full amount of damage. It's only marginally better if you're hunkering down. Don't want to waste the grenade on her this turn. Oak says I am to obey. Four to six, decent crit chance, but nope, we do not have, uh, we do not kill her. So what's the chance of hitting her that way? Way too low. I don't like it, but it seems like the necessary evil. Let's heal Renvin. I already can see that he is gonna hit uh, the med bay which I detest well that's the problem with this encounter not so much just getting her down I think that was solidly handled overall but the agency that you're having against her she was just hiding in the building there's no way I could have reached her it was a complete gamble in which direction she would be going proven the chosen can be hurt now we just have to work on putting them down for good. Anyways, two towers, a uh, pack of three because we killed the commander, uh, the, um, the officer as well. So a pack of three gone, a uh, pack of two that we killed over here. So two plus two, four, seven, chosen eight. I think we've killed eight overall at this point. I will reposition. Oh yeah, and the pack of um, Stun Lancer plus Mutant who just happened to walk into us. So that's ten down. I'm trusting you here. Six more to go, which I would assume are going to be inside of the building. Come get some. Maintaining this area. Overwatch. OK, 
good. Slowly but surely making our way into the building. Let's take a big look. The invaders send a patrol. Because there are a couple of remote sortable okay. objects within the facility. Orders confirmed, moving out. Got it covered. I am watching. Come get some. Ooh, they were super close for to a really, really potent remote start back there. Awesome. Fortunately, it didn't work out. Don't want to engage that pack, to be honest. Moving as ordered. I much rather like them to I'm reloading. remain in their little corner. All right, go back to your corner and let me remote start, please. There is, by the way, a very solid chance that the next thing that they are going to do is jumping up here, which is why I would like to change positions. And move back here in the hopes of Drawing them back. Scanning. Moving to Overwatch. I'll keep it under watch. Yeah, I can already see that they are right there. So they are moving in for the Reaper, which is fine. They are they're just following their programming, which is get to the closest target next to next to the mission objective and move into its direction, do whatever uh, needs to be done to put yourself between that target and the mission objective. And that is fine, but I have learned to control those AI behaviors a bit. So we are now going to lure them into a nice little trap. They should be following the Reaper. Yeah, they should be disappearing. That's a bit weird. So that's the last patrol. Folk says I am to obey. Let's just wait there for a second. And watch them come into our direction. Still holding their ground firmly. That's very noble. As if the AI would know what I am about to do to them. I will reposition. Now let's just stand here and let's just wait. Wow, didn't move at all. Okay. Okay. I see how it is. But how is it now? Getting a little bit closer. They did not move at all. All right. I am at your service. Let's 
let's move up here. That'll force them certainly a little bit closer. That pack definitely reacted. Come on, I on the, the only thing I need is for you I'm to walk into you. that little trap. In Trying to manipulate a pack to move into their certain death. All right, let's just hope one of the packs finally attempts to follow the Reaper. Apparently that's not the case. into our initial spot. Well, I can work with that. If you're getting a little bit closer over here, the fellows, I can certain, most certainly work with that. I can most certainly work with that. All right, let's move over it's here. And the farewell, there is no one there. If they are coming a tiny bit closer, I'll blow them all to smithereens. Waiting for that final remote start. I am on the move. Are you kidding me? They moved away. Well, I guess the logical consequence of that is continuing to keep our positions and sooner than later the rest of the team moves there as well. Very nice, we can close the door. Just gonna go into a defensive position over here. Hmm. 
Hmm. It's usually not a good sign if you're losing uh, line of sight to the last Did couple of packs so? because they are starting to do some weird stuff. Be okay. Good. Let's it, just move over here and pretend that we want to go all the way to here. Reapers are always vigilant. Closing on target position that way, now. the AI will most likely shift its movement to mesh ours. And since the remote startable object is by far the biggest one, I'm pretty confident that I can get an entire pack. And the reason why I do all of those shenanigans here is getting an entire pack for free is absolutely worth manipulating the AI a bit. They have now looked on the rooftop. I'm trusting you here. Unsuccessfully so. And they are moving in closer. It's a good sign. to be in direct reach of them so we're just continuing to move away as well moving on target location so it is decided affirmative all right got everyone almost in position we got the high ground it's a good engagement position all i need now is the enemy to walk up closer which they gladly will do and that'll be two hits can we get three is it worth waiting for the third? You know what? Let's just take what we can get. So easily set a flame. We're just fully overwatching. Let's see what the Stun Lancer is going to do. Most likely going to run to the other pack. Yeah, not a surprise. That's a pretty easy decision if they are here. How about we are going to move in closer? Scanning. I'll maintain my watch. Nice.
Okay, where is this guy? It's right down here. Okay, fair enough. There we go. That wouldn't be a full kill, but we do have options. Moving to designated coordinates. It's in the open, but there is no other pack around. That would be a kill. There we go, good job. I'll need more ammo soon. Overwatch and Overwatch. One more pack and we're a Gucci. Moving up, uh, let's position ourselves here. Overwatch, Overwatch, Reload, and Overwatch. Last pack really doesn't want to move. But that's the last pack. Are they going to move just a tiny bit for anything, or is it is it going to be hardcore just standing there apathetically doing nothing? Seeing the pack anymore. Moving as ordered. No one will cross. I'm on it. So they are at least moving. I will reposition. Hmm. Well. It seems uh, they are uncomfortable leaving that middle position. I'm trusting you here. I don't exactly get why, because if they would just explore a little bit further, they might find me, aka maybe also run into a remote start. It's not that the AI would ever learn that remote start is bad for them. This here seems to be a rather conservative pack. Yeah, it doesn't want to move at all. Okay, fair enough. Confirmed. And there are good parts about it because we can pretty much we can pretty much forecast that they are going to stay where they are So this should not trigger anyone. Okay, perfect. Unfortunately, once we're moving up, it will trigger them. They do have a pretty 
decent view of the entire location. At the same time, we are also able to simply charge in. So that's not bad either. We can approach from the back of the building. This here is unfortunately already spotted territory, so we're just going to stay where we are for the time being. Okay. Now let's see what we can do. Thankfully, we do have parry, which means pulling these guys here. Zap. Also means we can simply go on parry mode and let them hit us once. Okay, I'll go. Moving up. All right, Renman, come on. Unfortunately, a miss. Move into position. Oh, wow, that's these odds are really, really bad. We got to get the trooper, even if the odds are pretty damn terrible. Unfortunately, breaking the glass would make us the prime target for him. Fifty-fifty percent chance to be spotted out. We don't want to be spotted out um, if we're standing up there in the open. I don't want to be a good target for grenades um, or rockets in general. Could move to here and throw a grenade down here. Wouldn't kill it, most likely. Yeah, we. I need to go for a parry maneuver. of this here would be great but unfortunately too far away yeah I don't want to shoot and then afterwards re read it because um, the mech will just use its rockets and it will use its rockets it's just a high priority for any target that is literally uh, literally asking to be shot from the rooftop 
exploding this here would be great. But it would not reach the mech. No. Most likely will will not uh, reach the mech. Could move down to here, half cover, not very, not very inviting. Could all the, uh, could move all the way to here. Very aggressive move, 50% chance of killing this guy immediately, but this is the same 50% chance of not being detected when we're shooting from cover, uh, from concealment rather. It's more difficult turn than it looks. Um, at first, it seems to be relatively straightforward, but then, unfortunately, everyone missed. I should have had a better plan B. Yeah, this is probably, despite losing uh, concealment, the best plan. No one is going to die, but I'm concerned that we're maybe taking too much damage. Don't want to cluster. Yeah, and we don't have Sting yet, so can't really hurt the mech a lot. Except the remote start. But we already established that I can't do that. What I could do is... Go here. But that wouldn't be out of reach for the mech. Fortunately, it wouldn't. Could have abandoned the idea of parry and just run but there is no place maybe except here and not even that where no one can flank us so it must be parry what's the chance of hitting this guy here 90 percent so it's a 50 50 to kill him and a 50 50 to be concealed which I think is probably almost the best we can hope for. Can't really flank him anywhere. Let's try that. Like I said, not a really good plan B. You've got to be ready to sometimes lose. Luckily for us, the mech did not uh, try to shoot us. Uh, he used the grenades, and yeah, that was overall lucky. But at the same time, I didn't play it particularly well, so don't want to get props for playing something poorly. Moving into full cover. Are you kidding me? So we got the re-stealth, that's all fine. This time without being revealed. Do we have ammunition available? I guess that'll be a 
Moving up. And since everyone here is in cover, even if we wouldn't be killing him, which maybe is even the case. We can tank him for one more round. Just shouldn't cluster up. That's all there is. So we remain being the highest threat target. The enemy chases my life. And Hawkbiter, I think we can all agree, deserve to get this kill. Good. Now all there is left to do is... Trying to get back to the evacuation zone with everyone. Hogbite is going to be the one carrying the bio. Go, go, go. Getting it done. All right, one. Two. Rolling. Hotbite positions himself up here. I go Runs up I there, go. and I think it's I'm fair to reload. reload for everyone. Locked and loaded. Except for Hotbite, who does not need to. Ready to engage. Good. Another turn done. And now. Take the vial. And surprise, surprise, there Brass are going to be reinforcements. Jen, any readings? No signs of radioactivity, no significant energy signatures of any kind. Whatever it is, it's safe to handle. We've confirmed acquisition of the sample. Move to rendezvous at the extraction point. All right, Hawkbite moves to rendezvous. Bones already moves onto the um, evacuation point. And yeah, we can get a kill or two but i don't want to risk any more injuries we're just going to play it really 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 safe their clumsy patrol is moving Well, there you go. So. Hundred percent kill here. Well, that guy goes into sustenance. It's not even a hundred percent kill. I just get that extra trooper. Moving to here, that allows us another shot. Pure fire. Nice little hit. Tornoxus. Yeah, I, yeah, we could theoretically get that guy, and we would get a bit more experience. I get it, but that's not going to change the outcome of this campaign. 
Oh, look, we could farm the second set of reinforcements. I'd rather take less uh, timer on being tired and no chance of being injured instead of killing even more. 22, including the Chosen, is a pretty solid result. Unfortunately, got hit once, which is annoying. All right, we landed. The part that makes me more proud about the last mission is this... Uh, Despite the very last uh, um, round, where we well, took uh, fire from their side, everything else was handled very, very well without counterplay. So let's take a look. Uh, Renman, again, uh, offline for 13 days. I am super unhappy with him continuously being out of order. Stinks. Uh, um, yeah, and we got one promotion. Dark Tower Noxus. Congratulations, buddy. Well done. Got the Black Side Vial. The black site facility, I it will take 125 supplies is definitely helpful. And look at that. We can now examine uh, the Black Side Vial. Of course, Intel is uh, our biggest concern now. And yeah. We are good on research, May 17th, uh, which is only two and a half months in. We already formed uh, the black side. Let's take a look at the overall status on the global map. So, we got three areas, so the next supply drop will be juicy, almost 200. Perfect. We can now build a tower. We already know that we need to go to Europe, so might as well um, buy the bullet now. With that, we'll get the 20% improved um, research uh, time from the uh, laboratory on top of what we're doing. So it'll help us with one of our biggest issues at the moment, which is overall research time. And look at that. We get a nice little supply rate on top of it. So loss in here. That's cool. I like it. We do not have a lot of soldiers that can do the mission. So before we end today's mission, let's actually take a look at our armory. Covert action. Uh, Reaper is tired. That stinks. So Dark Tower will lead the uh, mission. We got a Grenadier. At Galleon Poe is our squaddy sharpshooter. Probably Gravedigger is our skirmisher. Just so that we do have a somewhat well-rounded team. Yeah, that is bad. Because supply rates tend to be more difficult. Can't ignore it because ignoring it would mean we're losing that area as well. And this, we cannot let that happen. Full stop. We cannot lose Intel. The advantage of doing it is we would get Alarium, Alloys and Supplies. That's good. Only thing that we wouldn't get immediately is Intel. So I probably would have preferred an Intel mission instead of a Supply Rate. Not sure why they, uh, the game is offering us Supplies at this point. We're, we're actually okay. Power, I would get. Con uh, resistance Contact, I would get that. But Supplies? Uh, not really sure. It must have deducted that our research is a bit behind uh, the normal uh, duration. But all things considered, we're actually not that far behind the curve. Like what? Uh, we're at plated armor. Um, so I have had multiple normal legendary campaigns with a couple of breakthroughs where I had been at plated armor. Um, or magnetic weapons as if I go weapons first. Um, within May, so that should be an issue. It's a weird spawn. Not sure what the game was thinking. Maybe it's just bad RNG once again. Uh, certainly not the best mission type for us. Let's see what else we need to do. So, uh, biggest things that are uh, upcoming. Certainly the supply drop. Before the supply drop happens, uh, we now have the supply um, uh, rate. And I think that that substitutes for a council mission which i much rather would have had a council mission usually offers you resistance operatives um, 
in some shape or capacity, maybe an engineer, maybe a scientist, maybe some soldiers. Um, but the bigger thing is it offers you a hundred Intel. So as things are standing, Intel is enough to get contact to Europe, but in Europe, we would need to continue contact throughout the entirety of Europe. So it's three areas to get there. So we got enough Intel for that. The other two are currently not covered. We got a lot of data pads, so I'm not terribly afraid of, uh, about it. But data pads also cost time, and we already established that research is the critical path. So we want to make sure that we're not deviating from our main objective. In terms of Shadow Chamber, um, the Black Side Vial would only be seven days, which is cool. Um, and currently we're looking at the encrypted codex data that would, I think that that is the project which would, um, hmm, not sure. I think the black side vial is the project uh, that um, would give us access to the other location. Yeah, I would need to think that through whether or not we're changing here and going for black side vial first. Um, we are already like 25% into encrypted data. Uh, clearly the vial with only seven days is a refreshing site. Most of the stuff that we needed to research usually took 15, 16, 17, 18 days. And seeing that we can now get it down to 12 is great. If we can get it down even further, uh, it would be um, even better. So I'm not too afraid. We got the shadow chamber incredibly early this time. And with the laboratory, we have enough research power behind it. Intel might be a short uh, coming of uh, this run. Anyways, uh, that is it. Um, we're at the end of today's episode. If you enjoyed what uh, you've seen, it was a longer episode, uh, don't forget to like and uh, subscribe to the channel. That would be nice. And see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye, guys.